is unlawful. Let's speak to uh, Becky Kearns from Fertility Matters at Work. Uh, Becky, the law is one thing, but best practice is another. We heard lots of messages from uh, viewers this morning. Um, let me give you one example. One woman said she felt under huge pressure, uh, hugely stressed, confided in her boss, but nothing improved, and she felt she had no choice but to leave the job. What can businesses do where there's nothing tangible there that they've perhaps done wrong, but where they've not been supportive enough? What kinds of things should they be doing? So I think often there's a lack of understanding about what it means to go through fertility treatment and the, the fact that it's a medical procedure, it's a physical process that people go through and what we find is organisations tend to sometimes refer to it as an elective process and put it alongside cosmetic surgery which isn't the case. People come to fertility treatment due to circumstance, not by choice. Um, but also, they just don't understand the enormity of what people are going through and the steps they can take to support. So things like having a supportive policy in place, which is really clear on what they're entitled to, but also training their managers so that they're aware of what it means to go through this and how they can support somebody. Um, someone else got in touch, uh, a viewer, saying that she'd had four miscarriages, two ruptured ectopic pregnancies, during one of those, she nearly lost her life, both needed surgery. She couldn't work for four weeks. And when she came back, she was put into a formal absence procedure. She said she had to justify the time off. She'd relived all that trauma again. And she felt that losses were treated as a general sickness rather than a loss of life. What's the situation there? I mean, has that company broken the law? Well, it's a heartbreaking situation and for this individual, they were pregnant at the time, so they should be protected with pregnancy legislation. And so I would, my advice would be to seek some advice there around your absence is related to pregnancy and so you shouldn't be put through formal absence procedures. Um, but again, it's that understanding about what it means to go through this. It's not just you go through a miscarriage and you get over it. That is a loss of a... A future it's the loss of a hopeful child and for people there's a real grieving process and we know that 90% of people going through fertility treatment or pregnancy loss will suffer from depression and anxiety and that's a step from Fertility Network UK so there is so much more to this than just needing some time off for appointments it's actually how do you support that person through that emotional process mm. as well and and also keep them in work that previous person who wrote in they left their job and so organizations are losing talent because of this by not recognising and supporting people. Um, just picking up on some of those points, um, another viewer uh, WhatsApped us and said, after a five-year fertility journey, including multiple miscarriages, she didn't feel she could tell her employer what she was going through. Eventually, when she did, she received no support. She got signed off with anxiety, eventually left her job because it was also overwhelming. She makes the point that we're seeing menopause policies being put in place and asks, where are the fertility policies? Well, that's what we're campaigning for. We're hoping that more organisations will put fertility policies in place. And I really feel that the menopause campaign that's happened over the last few years has really opened up that conversation in the workplace and it has broken down the stigma and it has allowed people that safe space to say, I'm going through this experience and I need this support. And so what we really want is for companies to follow suit when it comes to fertility policies as well. And it's not just recognising that it's just women that are impacted by this, there's partners as well. There's the LGBTQ plus community who will likely need to go through fertility treatment to build their family and so this is a real people issue. But I think some of the reasons why organisations aren't doing this is because they don't often recognise it as even an issue because people just don't feel comfortable talking about it so it's a vicious cycle in a way because people aren't asking for help because they don't feel like they can and because they're not organisations don't feel the need to actually put those policies in place. Okay Becky thank you very much for coming in and talking about all of that all of that with us this morning. Uh, Becky Kearns from Fertility Matters at work. And um, Sally and John, I think it's fair to say that you know, we had a lot of reaction uh, from people about this and people very happy that we're talking about it and feeling that it's being addressed. So I, I dare say it's something we'll come back to and talk about again in future. Yeah, Ben, thank you very much indeed. Really important to be able to talk about it openly.